everyone, and welcome back to Quick Conversations as we continue the celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. My name is Jerry L. Johnson, and today we'll be discussing political uprisings and their influence on Latin music. Joining us, we have artist, arranger, producer, studio owner, and licensed therapist, Cecilia Esquival, as well as educator, singer, songwriter, Lilo Gonzalez. So we're super excited to have this conversation today, especially in times like these. And as a quick reminder, this will be recorded via Zoom for playback on Facebook. And any additional recording of this program without the express written permission of the Recording Academy is strictly prohibited. So thank you so much, Cecilia. Thank you, Lilo. Go ahead and take it away. Hola, Lilo. ¿Qué tal, Cecilia? It's so good to see you. We've known each other for many years, haven't we? Many, many years singing and yeah. playing for many, yeah. for many cousins. That's right. We're not going to say how many, but we did meet in the United States in the 80s and 90s. And we both come from countries that have a very bloody history. I come from Argentina, you come from El Salvador. And I'll let you talk about this in a minute. I want to share my experience that I grew up in a dictatorship. So uh, when I grew up, anything that had to do with, with popular uprisings was a very dangerous thing. You know, protesting in the streets and marching in the streets was not something that we could do because we could, you know, go to jail and die. And we always looked up to some of the, of the popular movements in the United States, you know, Pete Seeger, Bob Dylan, John Baez, they were our role models. And then when I moved to the United States, I began to see that they were also looking at our popular movements and our music, and it was also influencing their, uh, their um, movements. And for me, the first chance that I had to participate in, in, in political marches and activism was when I moved to the United States. I don't know what that was like for you. Well, you know, uh, yes, I, I did some, something in El Salvador. I'm a Salvadorian. You know, my name is Lilo Gonzalez. And I came in 1981 during the, the civil war in my country. You know, again, since 1930s, we have been dominated by, uh, by, by coup d'etats, by militaries, you know, it's like the whole story of Latin America. Right. So music what, what was very important and very dangerous at the time too. Right. You know, right. carry, carry the, the, the C, no CDs, uh, tapes uh, or, 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 or long plays, you know, or oh, what a wow, Violeta Parra, Mercedes Sosa, Victor Jara. Victor Jara. Yes. You know, and, and so, uh, yes, I, I got all this music, and, but coming to the stage, you know, that's why, well, we use the music. You know, I right. came, I, I crossed the border with no paper. So, uh, you know, I said, hmm, and I start, uh, do you remember my music? Uh, eh, Amor Sin Papeles, No yes. Human Being is Illegal. That's you know, right. That, that was, Lilo, that was part of a campaign. Your, your song, No Human Being is Illegal, was part of a campaign, right? Well, oh, exactly, exactly. Uh, you, know, work. you know, I was in this country living for almost seven years with no paper, with no green card, no social security. That mean with no uh, a legal driver license, you know, or right. with no driver license, you know. And, and so, yes. That was a campaign that we put, no human being is illegal, you know, uh, 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 and, and the music and the solidarity, what yes. you were mentioned, you know, Holy Near, Jackson Brown, yes. you know, uh, John Baez, uh, yes. all of them, you know, singing, because, you know, we were also, they were, they, they were, they were not just supporting us, but they were also learning and getting, but, but it was a beautiful way, you know, to, right. to, to uh, to work together and music is powerful. 
that's right. You know, I am getting goosebumps just thinking about that, remembering those days. Remember, you were in a group called Isalco. I was in a group called Iskeye, who was mostly people from El Salvador, but we also had uh, three Americans in the group. And we, we, our two bands were the bands that were always there at all the political events for social justice, uh, for immigrants, etc. So the music was a key element in all of these political movements, right? Oh, it, it is, mira, th this morning, uh, you know, what a coincidence. Uh, 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 I was in a Zoom, uh, in a Zoom, uh, you know, every day, uh, this group uh, is called Carpe Diem. They have some, uh, you know, one song. You know, today, the person who was, who was performing was uh, 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 Peggy Seeger, the sister of Pete Seeger. Pete Seeger. Uh, and when I mentioned, you know, in 1984, that's when I when I I first uh, saw him singing at the Tacoma Middle School at the Tacoma Folk Festival. That's right. And, and I was telling, and she was so so happy to, to hear that. And that's when Pete Seeger, uh, you, you know, was uh, was singing "Somos el Barco" in español, and he loved it. And "Somos el Barco," "Somos el Mar," we are the boat, we are the sea, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and since that that day, you know. This is, he's an incredible guy, you know. Right. Uh, he lives, you know, his solidarity. You know, when, when Cuba, like Guantanamera, he got that, the, remember, because the, 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 there's no relation with Cuba. What, what happened, he got the royalties uh, and he gave them to them, you know, so, yes. so, so many things. So this morning I was with Peggy Seeger, who is a yeah. great uh, uh, songwriter too, you know. Oh, that's be awesome. Be beautiful. Mira, que coincidencia. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah, that is unbelievable. Yes. And I remember in one of the marches, and this is a chant that you still hear today, the people united will never be defeated. And I remember how when I heard that, I could not believe it. That was a song by Quilapayun. El Pueblo Unido Jamás Será Vencido, which was something that we all sang in private, in secret. And I had a memory of when I was still in Argentina, and we were working towards democracy, but in Chile, they still had a major dictatorship, of course. When Quilapayun, who was in exile in Europe, remember? They were all in exile. They came to Argentina for a performance. And I remember our solidarity, uh, all trying to work towards democracy and freedom. And uh, so then when I came to the United States and I got to meet people from other parts of Latin America, all of us struggling with the same issues, I realized that the music that I thought was from my country, you know, Mercedes Sosa and Violeta Parra, Victor Jara from Chile, but we kind of like appropriated that too. Then I realized that they were part of the entire Latin America. Everybody was embracing those songs. And like you said, the, the singers in the United States too, like Pete Seeger and John Baez, they were you incorporating those songs and making them popular. Gracias a la vida. Gracias a la vida. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No, you know, it, it, it's uh, like living in Washington DC, you know, uh, I haven't so many beautiful experiences. And let me say one of the last one, like, like last year, you know, you know, with the border, with the problem, with all those kids that has okay. been separated, you know, and they were trying to open uh, 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 a detention center right at the border of Tacoma Park. That's right, yeah. Uh, that, remember? That, that, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That was a wrong place to do it, you know, and something, I see something beautiful, because it was not just Latinos there. It was white people and a brother from an African community. You know, there was this band, a go, -go band, you know, yeah. and they were going to play, you know, before me. I said, no, let them close, you know, because, you know, and I right. start playing, you know, with Lucy Murphy, with Lucy yes, Murphy. Lucy uh, Murphy. Uh, right. start singing a, 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 a song, you know, this land is your land. Is, and after that, they join us, you know, and we were together. That was so beautiful. And that's what I'm saying, uh, uh, Cecilia. Uh, music is so powerful. You know, we, that changed my life, you know, and, music, yes. and keep me alive and, and, and with hope that we can build a better world. Yes, that's absolutely true. And I, I am remembering your first album, A Quien Corresponda, to whom it may, it may um, uh, belong, and um, to whom it may concern. 
And there's so many powerful lyrics in that, in that CD. I encourage people to go and look for it because it's so current even today, you know, everything that we went through with the border, with the jail kids, et cetera, like you were saying, it's like so much time has gone by, but these issues continue to be current today. So your music, unfortunately, the, 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 the problems that you portray in your music are still happening today. To, and to people of all races, like you say, it's not only Latinos. No, 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 no. And that's why, you know, Black Lives Matter is very important. Right. It's very important, you know. It's not just a slogan. No, no. It's something, you know, my last album, just let me say, uh, it's called Cuando Sea Grande, for children. And I did a happy birthday song. And I dedicated a song to the, to the little one, to the little uh, 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 Douglas, uh, uh, are you, it's uh, anti-slavery, uh, man, uh, he's from the sea, he was a slave, uh, uh, but he's a b b beautiful, uh, you know what he's been writing and saying, and I say, man, I, because he said, uh, well, I can see the master, the family, the kid uh, celebrating uh, uh, at birthday, but, I even didn't know when it was my birthday, uh -huh. you know, and that's why, and that's why, you know, and music is powerful, you know, uh, and many people have been singing, uh, even Marvin Gaye, 60 years ago, uh, singing the problem, of, so, and that's why, you know, we need to do, to build a better world, and music yes. is, is a way, you know, to connect and to do many things, you know. Right, right, and my feeling during all of those years was that we could get a message out through music that sometimes was not being heard through speaking, that music opened people because it reaches people at an emotional level. So sometimes hearing a song is much more powerful. And for me, one of the, of the songs that I always carry with me is the one about Monsignor Romero, uh, that it's, uh, he's such an, you know, an emblem for all of us in Latin America. He sacrificed himself for, for the people of El Salvador. So that song, it's, it's an anthem. It, it is. Yeah. Uh, let me just, it's Frederick Douglass. Frederick, Frederick Douglass. Douglass, there you go, you remembered, yes. You know, yes. I, I'm, I, and, and, you know and, and my mother-in-law gave me his, his biography. And I was reading, there's a little, it's a little, you know, and, and it's unbelievable, that changed my life, you yes. know, yes. and thinking about. And that's why, uh, uh, and the struggle, you know, Arbicho Romero in El Salvador, and how many people have been writing songs about Arbicho Romero, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, Pete Seeger, you know, in, in one of his introductions, he says, musician can teach the politician. It is fun to swap the lead. Musician can teach the planner, economist, engineer, and lawyer. Plan for improvisations. <laughs> Very good. That's uh, so right. That's so you right. You know, that, that's, that's yes. a bit bigger, you know. And, yeah, and, yeah. And hopefully, you know, yes. with, through music, we can change, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, the mind of so many people right. that I think for ignorance or for, you know, I don't want to say, you know, yeah. they are in the wrong side of, of history at the time. That, that's right. Very good point. And, you know, I'm, you know, going back to Black Lives Matter, like you were saying, and music is a very key part of that, of that movement. And also, a couple of years ago, we had the women from Chile that viralized a song, El Violador Eres Tú, that came part of the Me Too movement. Do you remember that? They exactly. Came, they came to D.C., they performed at the, you know, outside the Capitol, and that was that message of that song that it became global and now with the internet we didn't have that in those days right so but now that song is performed by women all over the world oh. exactly exactly and, and that is just so incredibly powerful so cecilia we are very lucky you know uh, uh we've been doing music and uh, and you will remember how many times we were in front of the white house you know for right. this demonstration how many mm -hmm. times you know, we were across from the, uh, uh, the capital. That's you know, I went just last, last week, if you see, uh, they canceled the TPS, the temporary resident, to Salvadorian people from Haiti, from Nicaragua. So it's so That's sad, right. you know, yeah. 
families that have been, so I was there, you know, ready with my guitar. I got a little late, but you know, that has been, that has been, you know, with Iskeye, Isalco, and after that, you know, uh, Cecilia and all this, uh, this, uh, uh, friends and organization like Caresen, you know, right. here, you know, yeah. in DC, and, 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 you know, and we're still, we're still doing that. We're right. still doing that. And, you know, Lilo, it's interesting. I was just thinking that both of us ended up doing music for children, which is what we both do now, right? What a coincidence, too and how the newer generations of Americans have, uh, you know, this openness to the Spanish language that we bring through the music. And it's wonderful to see that, right? Exactly, exactly. You know something, uh, and it's very interesting, like my, what I did with my, with my last, uh, uh, well, in my, in my other album, I, I put a song that I started thinking to a little one, and they love it. It's, uh, you cannot stop the cloud from forming. You cannot stop the rain from falling and you cannot stop the river from rushing to the sea, and you cannot stop the people fighting to be free. Oh, you know, okay. and, they, and they love it, you know, and they love, and especially now when I ask some sign language, you know, we need to teach a little one, you know, yes. to share, but to keep sharing, not just when they are little one, yes. when, we, when we grow up to, you know, yes. when we are older too, you know, and that's, that's to me is something very important that we need to do, and music, can help us and they can see, you know, the music, you know, like, like now we're celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. That's and what right. I say is that Latinos and, or his, Hispano we, is not a race, you know, it's not a race. We are all different color. We are yes. black, brown, yellow, with all those. And that's the reason of our music. And that's why we have salsa, we have merengue, we have bachata, you know, we, we have bo, bossa nova, we have all, yeah. look, it's beautiful. Right, exactly. So, so much diversity in our Latino culture. And that was one of the things I'm sure this happened to you too. Uh, and now people know a lot more about the diversity in Latino culture. But when we first came, everything south of the border was exactly the same for everybody, right? So we were all like kind of Mexicans who ate rice and beans and that was it. And now people understand the differences. Exactly. Do you know? It, it, it's interesting. Like they call when they have something, do you know a mariachi music? Uh, mariachi music. And, and that's, <laughs> that's why I remember at time, you know, but, yeah. but they were, you know, referring to anything Latino, uh, merengue, rancheras, right. you know, uh, and a thousand of rhythm, you know, a thousand yes. of music. And, and look the experience of, of, of Cuba you know, and the Afro-Cuban music, yeah. and how in the 1930s, they were not allowed to play the congas. And that's why they use the cajones, they make cajones, make the wood. So it's some way, you know, people yeah. are afraid of music and musicians, you know, they didn't allow to play the congas, so, but they were smart and they made their own, you know, Yes. With wood, you know, right. part of this history, in, right? In Peru, in Peru also, you know, the cajon from Peru, the same thing, same history, right? Yes. Uh, uh, right, is, yes. Yeah. So, uh, uh, that, that's a it, Yeah, that's a very good point, that people are afraid of music because music is so powerful, because it reaches the heart, not only the brain. And when, it, when you are moved at that level, that is when movements begin and change begins. Exactly. When, you, when you feel it in your heart, and that's what music does. Exactly, and that's why, you know, and that's why they killed Victor Jara in Chile, you know? That's right. He was, yes. he didn't, you know, he didn't have a, a gun, no. He had a guitar and his yeah. voice, you know, yeah. and, and that's why the persecution, again, in my country, in Salvador in the 1970s, you know, you couldn't just, uh, you know, if you listen, like, what a wow, or Mercedes Sosa, or Quilapayun in Tilimani, you had to bring down the volume, you know, bring down the exactly. volume. Because yes. you, you never uh, knew who was uh, listening. You know? Right, you could, you could um, grow and wake up in a ditch, dead exactly. in a ditch. Yes, exactly. yes. And I'm thinking, you know, as we, we, we close our conversation of the power of music and educating the youth and that like you were saying, that Victor Jara didn't have a gun, he had a, a guitar. And I'm thinking that putting instruments in the hands of children, it's such a wonderful way to give them a purpose and a reason 
you know, give them music so that they can create and feel heard so that they don't have to resort to a gun. Exactly, exactly, exactly. We need, uh, Facundo Cabral decía, we need more uh, musicians, you know. Um, if, if we have more musicians, it's a, le it's a un soldado menos. <laughs> That's right, one more musician is one less soldier. That is so, so yeah, true, know, that is so true. Uh, and, 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 and the beauty, you know, when uh, you play music, you see, we just get together, somebody start playing congas, uh, guitar, that's the most beautiful experience, you know, just, uh, yes. you don't see color, you don't see anything, you right. have the, the right. vibe of, of, right. the, of what's going on, you know. Right. And you know, both of us now living here, raising our families here as American citizens now, and, and getting to know all the wonderful aspects of the American culture and, and how welcoming American people are and how generous and, and you know, there's, the, there's so much solidarity here. And we get to meet brothers and sisters from all over the world and we make music together. So that richness, I am so grateful for having the experience to do that, which if I had stayed in Argentina, I would not have had that experience. Do you remember the new song festival that we used to celebrate right here? Yes. And, and this is a, it's a big concept, but we have a, uh, from Haiti, you know, from, from yes. Philippines, mm -hmm. uh, from Palestine. That's you know. right. From, yes. all, from all over, you know, yeah. and Native American doing music. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, uh, uh, you know, uh, to me, that's opened my eyes uh, and, and, uh, and uh, to embrace. And what you were saying, there are more people with the, with the, with the, with the values of solidarity in this yeah. country. That's right. I think what happens sometimes, the people, they don't speak up, you know, mm -hmm. but the majority of, the, of, the, of yes. the people of this country, and this is our country. Well, I'm not living to a Salvador. This is, and we need to do it better. But, right. but to do it better, we need to acknowledge, you know, all the mistake and hablar con la verdad, uh -huh. with the truth. We don't have to hide. No. That's right. No, that, we, 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 yeah. we have to tell, you know, what we did to the, to the native people, to the mm -hmm. people who, who were living in this land, you know, yes. to all those people that were brought from Africa, you know. Mm -hmm. We need to acknowledge and talk and talk yes. about this the, the history. Yes. And from there, we can build a better, a better country. That this yes. is the country for my kids and for my grandkids. That's right, exactly. This is where we made our homes and w this is where we create music with all of those different cultures that we have embraced. So yeah, Lilo, it's so great to see you. I know that we haven't seen each other in a while, but we always try to keep in touch and know about each other's lives. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 you know, I just put together a new album. I told you, uh, Cuando Sea Grande, so check it out. You know, That's I did awesome. a Carlos, I did a I did a song that Carlos Santana made famous, you know, a uh, jingo that is a Babatundi or Latunji from Nigeria. Oh. But, I, I, but I did a version for children. <laughs> so oh, that's great. Yeah, I'm going to check it out. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, Lilo. I could not think of a better way to celebrate Latino Heritage Month than, than you know, remembering all those wonderful moments that we had with our music. Iskeye <laughs> Isalco. That's right. Y, y todas las canciones que hemos hecho. Y todas Muchas las gracias. Canciones. Gracias, Lilo. Hasta Thank la you. próxima. Hasta la próxima. Thank Chao. you.